Hey there, it's Trisha with Easy Imini Trade, and today I'm going to just show you a little trick for using something as a target in new territory where price has never been before. Um, I always like to have something to shoot for or have an idea where price is going to react. And if we're coming into an area like on NQ, for example, in brand new territory where price has never been before, we know that it's going to generally creep its way higher. Usually it doesn't run away into brand new um, territory. So I'm going to show you this little trick. And then I'm going to be doing a webinar on Wednesday the 22nd at 4 p.m. Eastern. And if you can't attend live, no worries. It will be recorded and everyone who registers will get a copy of the um, recording. But I'm going to go over a bunch of different things as well as the... Um, Ichimoku Kijin line setup that um, I showed you guys last week in a quick video. So what I'm going to go over during this webinar is a bunch of stuff. So this is um, my website. Just go to easyeminitrade.com and then it'll be up here under the upcoming webinar January 22nd. So this is all the stuff I want to go over during this webinar. Um, I'm going to go over that um, Kijin line setup that I showed you last week and we'll be using the double stochastics for confirmation on that. And those are the same um, double stochastics that I use in my main setups, um, my slinky setup and the one minute setup. And also I'm going to show you how you can use that same double stochastic for um, clues in the market um, in the way of when price is likely going to stall and or pull back. So that's helpful um, if you're looking to buy off support or pull back off of resistance if you're going to buy or sell those areas or if you're already in a trade or if you're in a trending market and you're looking for um, a way to jump in um, a market that's already moving without you. And then I'm going to also show you how to spot divergence and how you can use it to your um, advantage in reference areas such as support and resistance. And I'm also going to show you a couple little tricks um, on basically finding support resistance areas based on the volume profile and um, the floor trader pivots. I'll show you how you can determine the targets and new price areas. And I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to show you um, that one little tidbit right now. But if you um, would like to attend the webinar, just go to my website and click on that upcoming webinar um, tab at the top there. And then all the information is there. Okay. So let me give you um, this tip on floor trader pivots. Okay, so we're looking at NQ on a 15-minute chart, and I did nothing to adjust these um, resistance lines here above this green line. This green line is Friday's high. So up until today, that was the all-time high. And if you look at your daily chart, here it is on the NQ. So once it took out Friday's high, we're in territory where we have never been before. If you look at, um, let's look at YM. YM not quite there yet. This is the all-time high here on YM. So still actual resistance areas that you could mark on this using actual price action. But above 29, um, 22 area, we have no reference. And if you look at ES, it's going to be the same situation as NQ. Friday, brand new all-time high, taking that out today. So how can we determine what we can use as possible reaction areas above us in an area where price has never been. So I'm going to show you a little trick. So I'm looking at my 15 minute chart and these are actual support resistance areas below me here based on actual um, price areas. So let me just get rid of everything. I just want you to look at this because I'm going to put these back on here. But you can see on this 15 minute how price is reacting at all these resistance lines that I put on here. but I had no idea what to use in theory because price has never been there before, right? So this morning when I started out my day, and I'm just going to get rid of all these up here, I've got the Floor Trader Pivots with um, Ninja Trader 8. So it's just an indicator and every platform should have it. And they might call it something different, but this is the Pivots and I'm using the daily um, pivot range. And if you're using Sierra, you'll use floor trader pivots with midpoints. And these are the um, lines that you'll see sometimes on people's charts that say S3, S3, 
2, S1, R3, 2, 1, pivot point, etc. Okay, so generally I just am looking at the pivot point, but for targets, if price is coming into an area where I've never been, I am going to use the all-time high, which is Friday's high here, and I'm going to use the R2 up there. So I'm just going to draw a line right there at R2. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this space between the high from Friday and this R2. Now I'm just going to eyeball it, but if you prefer, you can use your um, fib tool if you can't eyeball it. So I'm just going to get the halfway mark between these two areas up here and here, which would be right here, right? And then what I'm going to do is now I'm going to divide this space in half. And so I'm just going to eyeball it. Let's see, does that look about right? Yes. And then up here, I'll eyeball it. And that looks about right there. So now we've got reference areas. So once price traded through this um, all-time high, if there was still a lot of space between these, and what I mean by that is this high from Friday is 55.50, and this is 64. So realistically, this might not pop up, you know, nine points or eight points in, um, you know, a pop through the all-time high up there. So if you see that there's still a large distance, you can divide that space in half once again and up here once again. So it's just going to depend on what instrument you're trading and how it's um, actually moving that day as to how close you're going to need these um, together. So if you look at the um, areas that I originally drew, or even dividing them in, in half and in half and in half, that's all we're doing is we're just dividing them in half. So you can see um, right in this general area, when we divided it in half again, came up to that general area here on this pop, came up to the next area on the um, next pop, the next area on the next pop, next area on the next pop, the next one, this one here, it did bust right through, didn't even hesitate at that 80.50. Um, it's holding this general area here up around 84.50. And then our next area above us is going to be the R2, which is 89. So again, it just depends on how the market is go is moving that day. So now above that, what we would, would we use? We got our R3 up here. So now I'm going to divide that in half. And then I'm going to divide that in half. I'm just going to eyeball it, you guys. Now I'm going to divide that in half. And now I'm going to divide that in half, oops, and here in half. And so if I feel like there's still a lot of room, there's 10 points there. So the chances of this popping through this 89 and a quarter up to 99 in an all-time high area is probably pretty slim. So I'm going to just divide that space in half, and then I'm going to divide this in half. And so it just depends on you how many little areas you want to put on there. And you'll find that these areas, as crazy as it sounds, are likely going to be reaction areas. Now, the thing about these is that the floor trader pivots are based, like the floor trader pivots that are plotting on my chart today are based on Friday's range. So tomorrow morning when you set out, and if we need to mark areas above today's high, then we'll have to start from scratch because we'll have brand new floor trader pivots. So you're going to likely, depending on where the floor trader pivots are tomorrow, you're going to use today's high and then the first floor trader pivot above you and then divide the space in half and then in half and as many times as, um, as needed. And it's that simple. And believe it or not, if you are somebody who uses floor trader pivots every day in your trading, then you can actually do the same thing and you'll find that price will react in those areas. I prefer to draw my um, support resistance lines based on actual um, um, price action. So like once the market closes today, like tomorrow morning when I start, I'll you know adjust these according to the areas that are holding up today. But anything above today's high, I'm going to have to do the same exact thing that I just showed you. I'm gonna to have to use the floor trader pivots and divide the space in half and in half and in etc. So I can have something to shoot for. And if you wanted to look at ES, let me bring that up real quick. So here is ES and I have it on a 15 minute chart. You can put it on whatever um, size chart you like. Um, here's yesterday's high, uh, excuse me, Friday's high 87, floor trader pivot R2 
and then I'll just um, start from scratch here so you can see how I did it. So again, starting out this morning, this is what I did to have a reference of where price might react above the all-time high, which is Friday's high. So here's the R2, here's the high. So I'm just going to divide this space in half here. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. And then I'm going to divide the space in half again. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. And then up here, I'll do the same thing. And then if you feel like there's still a lot of space there, then you would divide it again. So you can see um, right now ES reacting in approximately that 89 spot. If it gets to 89, the next area we have is that 9150. And if, there, if you felt like there was still too much space there, then you just divide these in half again. And then basically they're going to be um, about point, point and a half apart. All right, you guys, as simple as it sounds, it really does work. Okay, have a great day. And if you want more info on the upcoming webinar, just go to my site, easyimmunitrade.com. Have a great day.